Kwa kini kwa waziri wa ilimu Amina Muhammad na kutana na wadao katika sekti ya ilimu kuzungumzia swala la masomo ya mtoto wa kike. Haya najiri wakati ambapo wazazi wanalalamika kuhusu wanako tarajiwa kwenda ili kujiunga na shule za upili. Na hivi sasa. We can be able to feel and we can be able to bring impact, the type of impact that we require. The type of investment that we are putting in at 7.8 million uh, pounds is a huge investment. And uh, this huge investment then needs to be moved forward in such a way that we shall be able to, to ensure our girl child benefits so that we can ensure that there is a return to the child, in this case our culture, and more importantly we are also quite an investment on the special needs girl. So I would not want to say so much this morning. I know the CS and ourselves might be moving on to the next place, but uh, notwithstanding, this being a very critical engagement with our partners, I know we have we worked very closely with DFID. We have worked very closely. Sandra J had uh, our partners in 2014 when we were engaging on GPE. She was able to assist us and facilitate it, and we were able to then get an investment of 8.4 million USD. And it is part of this investment that we now look forward to work with the British government to ensure that our culture and to ensure that we make a difference in the few boys that we are dealing with and the many girls that we are investing in. I would not want to say so much beyond that. I would want to request our key partner through the I Commissioner to make some comments. Karibu. Thank you, PS, Cabinet Secretary, Principal Secretary, our partners here today. Good morning. It's a huge pleasure for me to be here today with my friend, the Cabinet Secretary for Education, to launch this next step in the Girls' Education Challenge program here in Kenya. We know that one of the best, if not the best thing, that any country can do for its development, for its future prosperity, and to realize its potential, is to make sure it educates all of its girls. But business as usual is not going to drive the change that we want to see. Globally, 130 million girls between the ages of 6 and 17 are out of school. 15 million girls of primary school age and 10 million boys will never see the inside of a classroom. And if we cannot remedy that, we will not see the development that we want in our world. Those children who are out of school, they are often the most marginalized in our societies. Kids with disabilities, living in remote areas, the poorest children. And they are also therefore the hardest to reach. They risk being left behind as the rest of our countries develop and grow. And of course this is not just about getting kids into school, because as my colleague Sandra said earlier, sitting in a classroom is not the same thing as learning in a classroom. 250 million children around the world today are not learning basic reading and basic mathematics, even though they've spent four years in school. This is a global learning crisis, and it's costing developing countries billions of dollars every year in wasted education funding, paying for those school places and those teachers for kids who are not learning. Perhaps even more seriously, this learning crisis is denying those children the chance to learn what they need in order to realize their potential in their societies. And we know that if we get this right, it is transformative. With the right education, things really change. Kids from educated mothers are twice as likely to live beyond the age of five. 
Every extra school year that we give girls increases their future earnings by 10 to 20 percent. Every year, by 10 to 20 percent. Gender equality, it is said, could add $12 trillion a year to the world economy. Now, the whole economy of sub-Saharan Africa is under $3 trillion. So take four Africas and add those to the global economy, and that's what we get if we empower our women and our girls. So these are, these are the reasons why this matters so much to the British government, why we are investing over a billion dollars in girls' education through the Girls' Education Challenge alone, the biggest program of any country anywhere in the world to educate our young women. And Cabinet Secretary, your leadership in this, if you'll let me say so, is transformational and hugely important. I think many of you will know that we, the UK and Kenya, led by the Cabinet Secretary, have established a global platform for girls' education, co-chaired by the British Foreign Minister and the Kenyan Cabinet Secretary, Amina Mohammed. This is about bringing together a small, highly committed group of leaders to foster change, to support countries, to make commitments to unlock those 12 years of quality education for girls by 2030. Now, we say by 2030, and it sounds a long time away, it's only 12 years away. And a lot of hard work is needed between now and then to realize our goals. But let's look at what's already happening here in Kenya, at the trails that are being blazed on girls' education. As you said, Cabinet Secretary, last year at the platform, this is a moral imperative and it's smart economics. And Kenya is leading the way. Kenya is supporting girls who've had children to go back to school, giving them a second chance. It's outlawing and preventing and tackling genital cutting of young women and girls. It's providing free primary and secondary education, providing sanitary products that help girls manage their menstruation and stay in school, tackling those three and a half million days every year, I think you told me CS, that are lost to girls in school in Kenya if they cannot manage their menstruation. And the rewards are already coming. 94% of female Kenyans are literate. Now that compares to somewhere in the 70s in Tanzania, somewhere in the 50% in Ethiopia. So you are already seeing the results of this investment. Kenya is ahead of the East African PAC thanks to the leadership that you and your predecessors, CS, have shown. So the program we're launching today is about tackling the most marginalized and the most excluded. Because even with those impressive numbers, those great examples of leadership, girls are being left behind. And it is our responsibility to ensure that that does not happen. These are girls that live in nomadic communities or in the arid and isolated Somali border countries, counties, forgive me, where although many girls, the great proportion of girls across Kenya transition to secondary school, in those places, less than a third of those who transition to secondary school are girls. Most are falling out. These are girls that don't make it back to school after pregnancy or who are forced into unwanted early marriage. It's those girls that are being left behind and that we want to tackle with this new program today. So, as we've heard, in partnership with Action Aid, in collaboration with VSO and Leonard Cheshire, this new program will support five and a half thousand out-of-school girls and boys over the next four and a half years to access education. More than a third of that number will be kids with disabilities. And we will aim to ensure that they benefit from assistive devices and from learning tailored to their needs. Both of my parents were special needs teachers, and this is something that personally is enormously close to my heart. So I'll be following very closely how we adapt our offer through this program to make sure that those disabled kids, those with learning disabilities, are reached and are empowered and educated. We know, because we keep checking, 
that these interventions work. There's a very strong learning component of the Girls' Education Challenge, and we have learned important lessons from that already. We will learn more as we implement this new program. We know that when we tackle the financial barriers to education, it works. It increases enrollment, it increases attendance. We know when we put together girls' clubs, they raise girls' hopes, they raise their ambitions for themselves. We know that a simple intervention like a solar lamp in a house without power increases a girl's study time after the night falls every day and helps her learn better. So we know that many things work. We also know that many things are needed to make this work. Not one single magic bullet, 